Hello, welcome back. So, we were discussing about the hydrocyclone selection criteria in the last lecture. I have discussed that how the equipment manufacturers they specify their uh, or uh, say giving assurance give assurance to their clients based on the D 50 concept. An end user of cyclones normally does not use the value D 50. In practice, the selection is based on required size analysis of the overflow. That is, you know that you cannot give me a 100 percent your product, 100 percent uh, your separation at a particular size. So, what did you do? No. Now, when I want a 40 micrometer particle that is my liberation size is 40 micrometer. So, you have to decide that what kind of size analysis of your product you are asking for the closed circuit grinding operation to offer you. So, what did they do? that is in practice the selection is based on required size analysis of the overflow and they decide that say 95 percent minus 100 micro. So, suppose my end user I am an user I am a I am a manager of a mineral processing plant and I have seen and I will be satisfied if I am getting a closed circuit grinding product which is 95 percent 5 percent I am leaving it because I have said at the beginning that you have to accept that hydrocyclone operation is to some extent inefficient. So, I decide that I will accept a product having 95 percent minus 100 micrometer. Then what do we do? Then they have got some kind of chart we follow that is conventionally I have taken it from the uh, these these type of cut point and your say your conversion factors. This I have taken it from a your open source that is published by a company large uh, company that is called Metso Minerals. I kindly acknowledge their uh, your say data and the information leaving it in the open open to help me in teaching. So, what they do that is now they have got some kind of your correction factors, it may not be always correct that. So, you may, may have to check sometimes this correction factors, it is based on their engineers experience they are saying that if I want 99 percent passing in overflow, because I have to select a cyclone based on the equipment manufacturer specification. And their specification is based on D 50, but I want 95 percent minus 100, 100 micrometer. So, I have to convert the data into D 50 sizes. So, the what are the conversion factors that is I want 99 percent passing size of a size x and if I want to convert it to D 50 size I have to multiply it with 0.49 likewise the different factors are given. So, I am trying to explain you through some numbers like a flotation circuit needs a 95 percent minus 75 micron feet. Flotation is a process which we will discuss in the 11th lecture of this series it is called froth flotation process in most of the cases. So, that circuit it requires a 95 percent minus 75 micrometer feet. Now, this corresponds to a nominal cut point D 50 is you look at the 95 percent is the correcting factor is conversion factor is 0 0.65. So, that means it is 75 multiplied by 0 0.65 is equal to 48.75. What is the meaning of this? Like if I select a cyclone 
whose D50 is 48.75 micrometer. That can give me a consistent product that is coming through overflow, which is 95 percent below 75 micrometer size. So, if my requirement is 75, 95 percent 75 micrometer size, do not select a cyclone for D 50 of 75 micrometer, rather you have to select a, a cyclone of D 50 of 48.75 micrometer. Now, once D 50 is defined and once I know the D 50 of cyclone, now there are charts like your this company is having their own chart that is a client has sent a requirement to Metso, Metso is also an equipment manufacturer that we want you to install this your cyclone hydrocyclone circuit or a closed circuit grinding operation where I want cyclone overflow to be 95 percent below 75 micrometer that is the client's requirement. How do we ensure that the cyclone what you provide that will give that kind of product consistently to your client. So, what a Metro engineer what an engineer will do that is once the D 50 is selected. So, he has got a chart or it is called a one kind of your chart that is based on their own experiments at the laboratory scale with different materials with different particles having different densities what I understand of the different varieties of cyclones that up to what size range it can give for different density materials that is what is the minimum and maximum size they can produce that is the your D 50 size. So, if you look at that is a cyclone diameter if it is 40 millimeter it can give a D 50 size from 5 to 14 micrometer. So, that means, depending on the density of your material, it can give you a D 50 size of 5 to 14 micrometer. So, like that I will they will look for that at 48.75 what is that cyclone what are those cyclones that can give me that D 50. So, this cyclone that is the 250 millimeter diameter cyclone it D 50 ranges from 13 to 52 micrometer. So, this cyclone can give me a D 50 of 48.75 micrometer. If I extend this line, even you see that even this cyclone can give that is 350 millimeter, even this cyclone can give, even this cyclone can give, even this cyclone can give. So, if I draw a horizontal line, all these cyclones are capable of giving you the cut size of 48.75. So, it is not a single cyclone, a number of cyclones of bigger dimensions they can give. So, what I have to do? Now, I have to look at the logistics. I have to tell my client suppose I am the equipment manufacturer that okay, you can even go with this that is your 900 millimeter cyclone, but this capacity will be this say suppose 200 tons per hour. I may not require to process 200 tons per hour of material, so why should I select it? Maybe another reason is that that is for this 900 millimeter cyclone the cost may be and the tune of cost may be uh, more than say suppose say cost may be around uh, say 10,000 dollar suppose just for discussion sake. But that 200 tons per hour as I suppose this cyclone capacity is 40 tons per hour. So, that means, if I have to match 200 tons per hour, I need 5 of this, but each cyclone here cost you 1000 dollar. So, 5 of this cyclone will cost you 5000 dollar, whereas 
a single unit of this will cost you 10,000 dollars. That is why should I buy your single cyclone if I am the end user. And so, I will save 50 percent of the money. Another question is that if this cyclone when I am depending on only 1 percent that is one cyclone to give me at a rate of 200 tons per hour. So, if something goes wrong that is your related to maintenance related issues my entire circuit will be closed, but when I have got 5 cyclones at least if one cyclone goes wrong I can have still my 80 percent of the material we can process. So, these are the decisions or these are the options as an equipment manufacturer you can pass on to the your client and let the client decide or maybe your logistic supports all such of things are there. So, now let us say we have selected based on some reasons that this is the 250 your millimeter diameter of cyclone I have selected. Now, what they do that is I have to select the capacity. Now, capacity I want to process say suppose 100 tons per hour of dry solids, but a hydrocyclone acts, uh, accepts solids in the form of slurry and we have already discussed that the cyclone works well when the volumetric ratio of the fluid and the solid is 8 is to 1. So, that is why I have written that for efficient classification it is important that the feed density is as low as possible. Feed density means that is a percentage solids that is we want the cyclone to work at free setting conditions. So, 10 to 15 percent solids by volume that is 8 is to 1 that is your 1 is to 8 1 by 8 is around 12 to 13 percent. You get good efficiency. Now, if I want my cyclone to run at its best efficient condition. So, I have to run my cyclone at say suppose 12 percent solids by volume. So, now I want to process say suppose 100 tons per hour. So, what is the your say volumetric concentration of my slurry should be because my cyclone capacity is designated in terms of volumetric concentrate volumetric your flow rate of the slurry. So, I have to select this first that what is the solid concentration I want to run my cyclone 15 to 13 percent solids by volume deteriorating efficiency as a cyclone manufacturer you will caution your client that you have to sacrifice the efficiency if you are increasing the solid concentration and more than 30 percent solids by volume it is inefficient. So, you have to choose either of this. So, normally when the entire efficiency of your plant depends on the efficiency of your separation of your hydrocyclone normally it is a practice that you go by this that is 10 to 15 percent. Now, once I know that so I can calculate back that what is that volumetric capacity I am looking for. So, the volumetric capacity of a cyclone depends upon its diameter and there is another chart the equipment manufacturers they have that you now you look at there is a 250 millimeter cyclone diameter it has got a your flow rate that is your volumetric flow rate that is in meter cube per hour is 100 meter cube per hour. So, when it is 100 meter cube per hour and I know that the maximum solid concentration could be 15 percent solids by volume. So, I can calculate back that if I have to process 100 tons per hour whether I need one of this cyclone or whether I need 5 of this cyclone or 10 of this cyclone then I do the cost benefit analysis, I look at the logistics, I look at the maintenance related issues, then I decide that which cyclone I will use. So, or whether we will go for 
a single larger diameter cyclone looking at that chart that is whether it can also give me a d50 of 48.75 so this is how normally uh, the negotiation or the discussion goes on along with the end user and the cyclone manufacturers uh, both of them they sit together they discuss it and then they ultimately select it a larger cyclone will handle a larger capacity once the required diameter has been defined then the number of units needed to handle the given feed flow can be determined from the following table that is what already I have discussed. So, if you want to learn more about this topic that is hydrocyclone, I would suggest you to refer this your uh, books related uh, uh, books or maybe monograms that is by one is a classic book by D. Bradley as a hydrocyclone, then Savrosky as a compilation of many uh, literature and then the again the classic book Mendel Processing Technology by Barry was these days it is Finch and Wills you know that is McGill University partnership they have produced the recent version. So, and during my uh, uh, say discussion also I have uh, taken the some information from Metso Minerals website also I acknowledge all this um, help uh, and all this information collected from these three books and Metso website. Thank you very much.